Brian Chung joins us now with a closer look at that, Brian. Hi, Shauna. Well, it seemed like headed into this particular hearing in the House Financial Services Committee that a lot of the questioning would be about infrastructure spending or tax policy. And indeed, there were some questions on that front, but it seemed like this conversation was mostly dominated by climate change. We've heard a lot of discussion among the financial regulators of an interest, particularly under the Biden administration, in wanting to increase the oversight of how banks and other financial institutions are pricing the risk of extreme weather events. Here's what Fed Chairman Jay Powell said in that uh, testimony this afternoon. One way to do that is to run simulations and ask what would happen if, what would happen that. There are, there are no regulatory consequences contemplated. It, it is an exploration in understanding better what the risks are to the core of our financial system. And we feel like that that's our obligation is to understand that. And, and again, the, the, the financial institutions are, are very much actively doing this on their own. It's not something we're forcing them to do at this point. So it sounds like right there, the uh, Fed chairman was pushing back on the idea that they're being uh, more aggressive or stepping outside of their congressionally given mandate in uh, supervising some of these risks. This comes concurrently as Fed Governor Lael Brainerd announced that they would be having a Fed system-wide effort on trying to create some sort of infrastructure to make sure they can assess climate risk that would involve all 12 regional banks. For Chair Yellen's part, who she was also testifying as well, she said that the Financial Stability Oversight Council, which the Treasury Secretary has uh, purview over, could try to put some sort of a, a network-wide uh, call for the regulators to increase the amount of disclosures, for example, from publicly traded companies. Very interesting to watch there. And reminder that this is the first of two days of hearings of both the Treasury Secretary and the Fed Chairman. They will both be testifying in the Senate Banking Committee at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, and we'll obviously have the full coverage of that right here on Yahoo Finance. Brian, when Secretary Yellen was going through her confirmation hearing, she brought up the state and local tax deduction issue, the SALT issue, which disappeared uh, under the Trump tax reform. She said they would look at it. But today she said something that got a lot of people who used to take that deduction excited, quote, inequities that this caused are remedied in a fair and responsible way. What signal is the Treasury Secretary sending to people about tax reform and the potential for SALT to come back? Well, it does seem like on broad tax policy, uh, the, the Treasury Secretary was very adamant that there would be some changes coming down the road. We just don't know exactly what the specificity of that is going to be. One reason is that they want to try to finance the $1.9 trillion in spending that they just put into place, and they might also need it for the $3 trillion of possible proposed infrastructure spending that they're apparently now working on. So changes to the tax code might be required to make sure that they can finance those operations on the SALT tax. That could be one way they can do that. There were indeed questions about that in this hearing, but she was very vague about the details of SALT or any other component of the tax package, saying that only changes to the structure will, quote, help to pay for some of those programs, like I mentioned, infrastructure in addition to the COVID relief bill. So uh, the Biden administration so far continuing to say that it will not raise taxes on those making less than $400,000 a year. But again, until the ink is on paper, really difficult to tell where the moving targets are on that tax reform.